Hey friends, welcome. Uh, today we are going to discuss thermodynamic functions in terms of partition function. Now there are several thermodynamic functions uh, which can be represented or expressed in terms of partition function. So in next few videos uh, we will be discussing all those. Now in previous few videos we have discussed different types of partition function. So individual thermodynamic functions can be represented in terms of partition function and today we are going to discuss two such thermodynamic functions. The first thermodynamic function that we are looking to is the internal energy. Internal energy and it can be represented by E. So we will represent internal energy in terms of partition function. Now for representing internal energy in terms of partition function, what we will consider is that we are having n number of molecules and that n number of molecules are distributed amongst several energy levels as we had discussed in case of Maxwell Boltzmann distribution law that we are having different number of particles uh, say n0, n1, n2 and that goes up to ni number of particles and that are distributed in e0 e1 e2 up to ei amount of energy levels now this particle so the total energy or suppose we say that e is the total energy then the total energy e can be written as e is equal to n0 e0 plus n1 e1 plus n2 e2 plus dot 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 up to ni ei okay and hence this we can write it as summation ni ei now if you write the relation for maxwell boltzmann distribution law we were having ni upon n was equal to gi e raised to minus ei upon kt upon summation gi e raised to minus ei upon kt and the lower term that is this term is known as our partition function so we can write gi e raised to minus ei upon kt upon this i can write it as q which is our partition function and this n will go on right hand side and suppose if we consider that the energy levels are non-degenerate then the statistical weight factor can be removed from here and i can take this n on right hand side so and hence i will have ni will be equal to n upon q e raised to minus ei upon kt okay so this will be our term and this value of ni i can substitute in this particular relationship and hence our internal energy E will be equal to summation of EI into N by Q E raised to minus EI upon KT and further N and Q they are constant so we can take it out of the bracket and hence we will have N by Q summation EI E raised to minus ei upon kt we know that the partition function q can be written as summation e raised to minus ei upon kt where we are considering that the degeneracy of the energy levels is 1 so g will gi will be equal to 1 and hence we will have only this term now we will differentiate this equation with respect to temperature so when we differentiate this equ equation with respect to temperature we will have dq by dt that is equal to we know that differentiation of e raised to x will be e raised to x only and hence we will have summation e raised to minus ei upon kt further we need to differentiate this term also so when we are differentiating this term both these terms are constant and hence they will be written as such and again we will need to differentiate 1 upon t and differentiation of 1 upon t is 
minus 1 upon t square and we have already 1 minus over here so this minus minus it will become plus and differentiation of 1 upon t is minus 1 upon t square so we will have t square over here now we will just rearrange this term in terms of this particular representation and hence we can write summation e raised to minus ei upon kt is equal to we will have dq by t into kt square okay we will keep summation ei also this side so ei will remain this side because we have summation ei e raised to minus ei upon kt so we will keep summation ei e raised to minus ei kt on our left hand side and the remaining terms are rearranged okay now if we see then this particular term and this particular term both are same okay so what we will do is we will substitute the value of summation ei raised to minus ei upon kt in the above equation so when we substitute that we will have e is equal to n by q dq by dt into kt square further we know that dq by q can be written as dln q and we can rearrange this so we will have n k t square dq by q we will write as d l n q upon d t if we are considering that we are taking one mole of any substance then for n we can substitute it by capital N that is our Avogadro's number because for one mole of any substance uh, we know that it is equal to the Avogadro's number and hence if we are considering one mole of substance then small n can be replaced by N that is our Avogadro's number and hence we will have our internal energy is equal to we will have capital N into K T square DLNQ by DT and further N into K is equal to r that is real gas constant that is we have the relation that boltzmann constant k is equal to r by n so if we substitute or if we rearrange then we will have k into n will be equal to r so we have k into n or n into k so that can be written as r that is our real gas constant into t square dln q by dt so this is our final equation for internal energy in terms of partition function the next thermodynamic quantity that we are going to discuss is heat capacity and that we know it is represented by c and if we write heat capacity at constant volume i can write cv so from first law of thermodynamics we know that the heat capacity at constant volume is given by de upon dt at constant volume and we have just now derived the representation or the expression of internal energy in terms of partition function so we can substitute the value of e in this particular representation and hence we will have ddt of will we had r t square dln q upon dt at constant volume so this is our representation of heat capacity in terms of partition function one more thing we can do r is our real gas constant and hence we can take r outside the bracket and hence we'll have r into ddt of we will have sorry t square dln q by dt at constant volume so this is the relation of heat capacity in terms of partition function so hence you might have understood how we can represent the internal energy as well as the heat capacity in terms of partition function thank you very much